Welcome back to the shop, beloved. In today's video, I want to share with you how I've been or how I've set up uh, springtime retrieval gear for dual sport moto. Now, duals, a dual sport motorcycle, I think for a lot of guys, solves a lot of problems uh, for having a good bug out vehicle, something that gives you options that you can get around roadblocks, traffic jams, pretty much go anywhere. Something that I've been working on the last couple of years is how to carry a really much needed equipment, especially if you're riding in the forest. So today I want to show you how I set up my retrieval equipment, as well as a very quick way to mount a silky saw that you can get at without digging through your pack. Here's the setup I use. On the front fender, I like to mount everything. I do not like to have stuff in my pack. You stand up and down all day long and having all the extra weight really tires you out and, and to have to stop and take off your pack and dig through stuff is always a hassle so the two things that I like to keep on my fender are a piece of uh, tubular webbing now this is daisy chained and hooked on to a tugger strap this is a tugger strap that ties into the lower triple clamp and uh, it gives you the, a, a place where you can pull the bike if you, you slip down off of an edge or you need to drag it under a gate you know what whatever you need to find you do this find to do this is always very handy and everything's got to be quick. You know, I don't want to mess around with stuff and restocking stuff. So this is kind of what I came up with and it works really good. The volet straps, these are one of my favorite things in the whole world. They're, they were originally made uh, for holding skis together. They come in all different sizes and, and lengths, but the rubber compound on them is so durable. I've never had one break. Uh, they're one hand operation and the, the, the rubber that they're made out of is it sticks. So it doesn't fall, you know, things don't fall off uh, like they do when you try to tie things down with rope. One hack that I do is I put a zip tie in the ends. And the reason for that is that when I pull this stuff out, these volley straps, now they don't fall on the ground. You don't lose them. So just, just a little trick. This is just uh, woven on here with a daisy chain and we'll do it. I'll show you how to do that. But then you can just slide your saw on there. And what I'll do is, is I'll just half this. I don't get to the saw that often, but when you need it, you need it, right? And then this one here. And I've put a lot of hours on this in really rough terrain. I've never had it even move, never come off. If you want a little ex extra measure of safety, let's I put this on backwards. What I, If I'm going to be not using it a lot, I'll, I'll click the lanyard inside the beaner. So if the straps were to fail, then that, that would catch it right there. So for, uh, to deploy this guy when you need it, you just loosen the straps and this is called a, a daisy chain. This is the way contractors roll extension cords as well. And if you do it properly, when you should have a nice locking beaner, the beaner is what keeps it from unraveling. Never any knots, no problems at all. You've got 10 feet, you've actually got 20 feet of webbing is, is just halved. So if you want to single line it, then that'll give you 20 feet, which is, you can do a lot with. If you, let's say you're by yourself and you drop a bike up over the edge or you get it stuck in a mud bog, you just cannot get it out by yourself. You don't have any buddies. You know, what you can do with this because this webbing is so strong is, is you can single line this in 20 feet, usually you can get to a tree or a stump or something and then pull it as tight as you can and then take a nice long stick you'd cut with your saw and uh, basically, uh, uh, what do you call it? Not a windage, but, but you can twist this. A tw windless. You can twist this around and it will pull the bike up out of the ledge, at least get you going. I've done that before and it works really well. To daisy chain, go to your ends here, keep everything stacked neatly. And you're basically just gonna throw a loop. Stick your fingers through the loop, keep it tight as possible. I just make a loop just so you can get two fingers in, grab, and you're just going to repeat this over and over again. This is a great way to wrap up cordage, webbing, extension cords, anything it, that you don't want to tangle. All you need that for that last loop, go up tight against your tugger, is just enough material to get your locking beaner in. Now that will hold that and prevent that from coming loose. When you're ready to deploy it, you just simply run this out and then you've got no tangles, no mess. The, this is the Silky Big Boy. This is a great saw for trail maintenance. 
A lot of guys carry little tiny saws that just don't get it done. They work so hard where you, with a little bit of ingenuity, you can pack one of these big ones and have a true two-handed saw that's a lot more capable. But they're hard to carry in a pack. And I, 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 I only wear a nine liter pack, so I like to keep as much on the bike as possible. A spare part you should absolutely carry is a spare master link. If you break a chain in a remote location, you're not gonna fix it with bark and reeds. You have to have the tools to repair a chain. It's an essential piece of equipment. Having an extra link uh, can be stored on the number plate. Just drill a couple holes. You can see there, there's the complete everything for replacing or fixing a, an O-ring chain. Don't forget a chain tool. On, if you have nice new links like this, you are not going to press those off with a screwdriver and the tools you have on hand. You need to have a proper pressing tool. Having a spare shifter is pretty important. I've seen guys lose them. I've never lost one myself, but I have had one come loose. Make sure you carry an extra shifter and the bolt and washers, everything you're going to need in your pack as well. Because you lose the bolt, the shifter's not going to do any, any good. Again, it's all about getting weight off your back and let the bike carry it. So I. You can safety wire or zip tie your shifter on to the, the radiator guards here. I apologize for all the dirt. I don't keep my bike like this. I just got back from a ride, so I will wash it today. Um, tire bars uh, for changing a tire on there, zip tied as well. Look for creative places to put things to get them out of your pack. Here inside the air box, I'm able to put my entire tool kit as well as a spare spark plug. There's actually quite a bit of room in there, and I've been riding like that for a couple years now. All the tools for the bike, this is all metal and quite heavy. Uh, so I try to pick things that are gonna be as universal as light as possible. For example, instead of using a ratchet, which is big and heavy, a lot of metal, I use this from Motion Pro. This actually fits into the wrench that's mounted to the, to the radiator guard. And this gives me a, a ratchet option. That way I only have to carry this in an extension. Um, I carry titanium wrenches for weight. All the Allens, zip ties, you know, all the basic tool kits, you know. Also, a Kanipex adjustable pliers, as well as mini Cobras, and tire repair kit, plugs, all that sort of thing. This is a little uh, bag made by Microbat, just a little military style zipper pouch. And I found that if I shake it and pack it just right, it fits up perfectly. up here in this void. Now, you will, one thing you want to do to your air filter, because if you're going to be adding tools that are going to be bouncing around in there, these air filters are foam and somewhat delicate. So here is a trick that you can use um, to make sure that it does, you don't poke a hole in your filter by having tools in here. And this is a little part that is 3D printed. I think I found this at a site called Taco Moto. And this basically, I'm not going to, take it off but it's a disc that just slips over the point of this this point is kind of this is kind of pointy and it'll poke a hole in your air filter if you have tools around in there it can so this gives it a little bit bigger surface area it's less likely to punch through there but you can put quite a bit of stuff in here sometimes i'll even pack more things 